They say that it is live. We're going to make sure and give it a minute. Let's get this thing uh, popping and bouncing as everybody is checking in. Hope everyone's had a great week, great finish to your week. It is Friday afternoon. Hopefully that's, a, hopefully that's good for some of you. Those of you who want to get, get done with work for the week, who are looking forward to the weekend. Those of you who don't really have a weekend because you love what you do every day, shout out to y'all as well. Shout out to everybody who hates their job and they're happy that it's Friday evening. Whatever it is, either way, you're in a good place right now because what we're about to talk about, y'all see what the topic is. So as y'all are checking in, if you have been here before, do you know what the routine is? Leave a comment, tell me your name, and tell me where you're checking in from. If you're on Facebook, I got Facebook to my left, Facebook slash work on your game for those who don't know. Instagram to my right. Instagram is at Drake Baldwin. Put yourself in the comment section. We're going to get into this in about 30 seconds. I don't even wait too long for people to come in. We just get right into it. And he said, checking in from Fargo. You showed my old high school ball, me, and he loves working on your game. Well, that's what's up. Your high school coach. Yo, shout out to your high school coach. Tell him he needs to come into these lives so he can get so he can get some of this game that I'm dropping every single day. So as y'all coming in, shout yourself out in the comment section. I'm getting started in like 30 seconds. Shout yourself out. Let's get to it. Xavier checking in from the Bay Area, California. Shout out to the Bay Area. The Bay Area is nice. It's a little bit too cool for me up there. Xavier is a little bit too cool for me in the Bay Area. It gets, it gets too cold at night. I don't like having to put on a hoodie at night. And I like when it's like 90 during the day. So y'all don't get warm enough for me, but I will visit. I couldn't live there, but I'll visit. Uh, checking in from the gutter. Shout out, to, shout out to everybody checking in from the gutter. <laughs> North Carolina is in the house. Shout out to North Carolina. I like North Carolina. Florida is the best place for me. But shout out to everybody who's living in every other place that may not quite be as good, but y'all, you're doing your thing. You're surviving where you're at. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. I'm a former nine-year professional athlete, but more importantly than that, now I'm an author of 27 books. I've done four TED Talks, and more importantly than that, I've created this whole philosophy, this whole brand in this business is called Work On Your Game. It's all about, this is the most important part, showing you how the tools that are necessary to succeed in sports, how those same tools apply to business and life, and if you happen to be an athlete, how, of course, how you can use those tools in life. So, before we get into today's topic, I did put out, if you follow my story on IG, also on Facebook, I put out a poll today asking people, do y'all want me to keep talking about this social justice, racial unrest, whatever you want to call this, race, politics, Trump, black people, white people, black lives matter, all lives matter, do y'all want me to keep talking about this stuff? Because sometimes I'm thinking, do I even need to keep talking about these things? Because, I mean, it's the same stuff. It's just different angles to talk about it from. Nothing new is actually happening. Hopefully nothing new happens. Not anything bad, at least. And I thought people would be saying they were tired of it. But I found out that it's actually kind of half and half. Like, as of the five minutes ago when I checked the poll, it was like 55% said keep talking about it. And 45% said talk about something else. So what that means is, because all y'all are part of the audience, so we got to honor everybody. Sometimes I'm going to talk about some evergreen stuff that has nothing to do with that. And sometimes I'm going to talk about those things directly. So since yesterday, I talked about what was the question yesterday? Does money solve systemic racism? I did a whole live on that. It's on my IGTV tab on Instagram and it's on my Facebook page if you want to watch it on the videos tab. Today, I'm going to talk about something that's not directly about that. But listen, everything that I talk about, I want everybody to be clear. I don't talk about two different topics. I talk about one topic every single day. Here's the topic work on your game. The whole topic is the work on your game philosophy every day. We just talk about different frameworks within that philosophy. That's what I do every day. So today's topic, we're talking about tension relieving versus goal achieving activities. Basically, what we're talking about here today is the different distinctions between the type of activities that each one of us can partake in and where those are going to take us, where different types of activities will take us, a tension relieving activity versus a goal achieving activity. And I'm going to explain to you exactly what I mean. There's this uh, Nobel Prize winning economist by the name of Gary Becker. I believe he's an older guy. I'm not sure he's even alive anymore. If he's alive, sorry, Gary, I didn't mean to kill you. But if Gary's an uh, older guy, Nobel Prize winner, and I had read this study that he had done where he said, when you look at the bottom 80% of income earners in the world, Darby Gwynn was good. You look at the Barbie bottom, I said Barbie, the bottom 80% of income earners in the United States, at least. He said those people, their income goes up by about, as this is at the time of his study, it goes up by about 3% per year. All right, so you take all the income earners, the top 20%, bottom 80%. Their income goes up by about 3% per year. Now, here's the challenge with your income going up 3% a year. He said that's the same rate, pretty close to inflation. 
And those of you who don't know what inflation is, that means the cost of living just going up. The cost of gas, cost of a car, cost of a, a good meal, the cost of a pair of sneakers, the cost of some clothes, it goes up about 3% every year, right? Now, if your income is going up at the same rate of inflation, that's kind of, I mean, you could call that a problem. Maybe you don't think it is, but we call that stagnation, right? Because the amount of, if you make more money this year than you made last year, but the cost of you being alive is the exact same increase, then you can never improve the quality of your life. You're basically running on a treadmill because you're only increasing your income at the pace that it, the price of your expenses are going up. So you can never improve yourself. You can never improve your quality of life because the expenses are eating up all of your you know, gains financially. On the other hand, the top 20% of income earners in America, their income, their revenue goes up every year by about 11%. And over the course of about six or seven years, those individuals double their money every six to seven years because their income's going up 11%. Now, if you didn't read between the lines of what I just explained to you, that is another version of Pareto's principle, which some of you know as the 80-20 rule. 80% of the, and this is when people talk about the wealth gap and the income gap, not just amongst races, but just period. The top earners are earning just in a small percentage of people, they're earning way more than this whole big chunk of people down lower below. Now, this topic here today is not about income specifically, but you can apply this to whatever it is that you're doing. The topic is what kind of actions are you taking in your everyday life? This is really about discipline. Are you taking actions that are designed to relieve tension, meaning make things easier for you to be more fun, to be less demanding, less taxing on you? Or are you taking actions that are more goal-oriented, goal-achieving activities, meaning things that are going to get you closer to where you want to go in life, become the person that you want to be doing what you want to do. Now, there are times to take actions that will relieve tension because maybe you want to take a hot shower because you had a long day, or you want to take a bubble bath, or you want to watch some Netflix. Those are tension-relieving activities. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing those. Listen, I do those sometimes, not really the bubble bath, but I will you know, chill, I will get on my Twitter, I will waste a little bit of time. Uh, scrolling through you know, a social media feed or something like that, I will do those things as well. But you got to ask yourself in aggregate over the course of your day, are you spending time doing things to relieve tension, which basically means take the, take the foot off the gas, or are you doing things that are going to push you towards getting to where you want to go, which may create tension, but in the end is going to be worth it because the payoff in the end is going to give you what you want. And as they say in life, if you are easy on yourself, life is hard on you. If you are hard on yourself, life is easy on you. So that's what we're talking about here today. If I was to uh, reduce it down to a simple cliche that I think many of you have heard. Point number one, topic here today is tension relieving versus goal achieving activities. Yes, bubble bath. Point number one, the bottom 80% of people. This is, these are the things that we know about the bottom 80% of people in, we'll just say America, but you can, if you don't live in America, you can use this as well. They rarely read a book. They rarely take a course, some kind of course to learn. I'm not talking about school courses. I'm talking about a course to learn on your own volition that nobody forced you to take. They rarely try to learn a new skill. They rarely try to expand themselves in any way. The people in the bottom 80% of the, the world, the bottom 80% of the, the pyramid of life, everybody knows what a pyramid is, right? It's wider at the bottom and it's very narrow at the top. The people at the bottom 80% don't do things to expand themselves. They don't try to learn anything new. They don't go get any new information. They do not invest in you know, improving themselves in any way. They're not looking to expand any way at all. What they are spending their time doing, the bottom 80%, they do tension relieving activities. What are tension relieving activities? Any kind of time waster that does not require any, it doesn't require any effort or any application from you. Watching TV, back in the days, even before I was alive, my parents used to call the TV the idiot box. I never heard people say that when I was growing up, except for my parents. So they probably, that's probably something they used to say back in the days, like the 60s and the 70s. But the idiot box, they called it that because you weren't really learning anything from watching TV. It's basically a place to burn up brain cells. Watching TV, uh, going to the club, going to the bar, uh, falling behind in any way, shape, or form unknowingly simply because you are not voluntarily taking actions to make yourself better and understand something, people. The actions that you're going to take that are going to make you better are usually going to cause some tension within you. Why? Because in order for you to get better, you're going to have to challenge yourself to do more or do better or go further than what you're used to. Anyone here who has ever lifted weights or you don't even have to lift weights, any kind of exercise, when you're working out, you are doing something that 
ideally you're doing some type of training that's going to be a little bit harder than what you're used to. If you're doing what you're already used to doing, you're going to stay in the same spot. You're, you're going to get stagnant. You're going to stop seeing results. But if you do things that challenge you, so a weightlifter, for example, is going to lift the weight that's heavier than what he's used to lifting or maybe lift a similar weight that they can lift, but they lift it more times than they used to. They're going to do something that taxes the muscle, right? That challenges the body to do more than it's used to, whether that's more weight, more repetitions, uh, less time in between sets. We call that high intensity interval training. Something is going to give you a challenge to your body. What's the reason why people do that in the gym? Everybody understands this concept. Why do people do that? Because the more often you do it, you do it consistently, your body's going to start responding better. You're going to be in better shape. Your heart will be healthier. You'll get nicer muscles. You have a nice six pack. The girls, you have nice hips and nice butt. Whatever it is you're trying to get out of the gym. Maybe you'll just get in shape because the doctor told you, hey, if you don't get in shape, you're going to have another heart attack and you won't survive. Whatever it is, you're going to the gym and working out and challenging your body. Tension. You're creating tension in your body because you want your body to be in better shape. Anyone who goes to the gym or you work out in any way, even if you work out in your living room, everyone understands this concept. Understand that the same concept applies to your mind. You must be challenging and taxing your mind, meaning read something that is going to challenge the way that you think. Listen to people who have different opinions from you who, can, who at least have the ability to explain their opinion and why it makes sense in a logical way. That, that's a key disclaimer because everybody has an opinion. So don't listen to everybody. Listen to people who have a different opinion, but they can explain their opinion in a logical, reasonable way that other people can at least appreciate. You don't have to agree, but you can at least appreciate it. That's a challenge to your mind. Reading books is a challenge to your mind because when someone writes a book, they're taking all the knowledge that they have in their head on a certain topic and they're putting it into 300 pages that you can condense, you can consume in a month. That is a challenge to your mind. You're taking 10 years of a person's life and getting it in 30 days and now you have to absorb and understand it and then you have to figure out how it applies to you. Taking a course, not a course in school, but a course that you decide to sign up for on your own or taking something free. Listen to a, a podcast with some thoughtful individuals on there who are going to give you some ideas or have some perspectives that you haven't had before. These are all tension creating activities. If you are going to grow and expand yourself in life, you must be involved in tension creating activities. Not all tension relieving. Again, tension relieving activities are good. Going to sleep is a good thing. All right, going to sleep relieves tension. All right, you can't work hard while you're sleeping. You need to do that. All right, you, sometimes you want to watch Netflix. Sometimes you want to go get a, an ice cream cone. Sometimes you just want to go walk around in the, in the grass with bare feet and look up at the, at the sun and play with butterflies. That's cool. But ask yourself in aggregate, where are you spending your time? Tension relieving or tension creating? Creating tension, just like lifting weights, makes the muscles stronger. All right, everybody, anybody here got big muscles or you want to, you know how to do it, right? Go to the gym and lift weights. Everybody understands that. Anybody here want to lose weight? What do you got to do? You got to put your body in a state of tension. That might mean for you, if you're out of shape and you haven't worked out in 10 years, it might mean taking a two-mile walk every day. It might mean riding your bike 10 miles. It might mean joining a boot camp class. It might mean hiring a personal trainer. It might mean running a marathon, but you have to put yourself in a state of tension in order to grow. People who grow are always looking for ways to add tension to their lives because it challenges them to get better. People who stay the same and get worse are looking, ways to, looking for ways to get rid of tension so that they never have to challenge themselves and therefore they stay where they are. We call that stagnation. Here's the problem with stagnation. For those of you who never heard me say this, the world is always moving. We know this, right? That's why the sun comes up in the morning and it goes down at night. That's why we get spring, summer, fall, winter. The earth is moving, literally spinning on its axis and is moving around the sun. So if the world is moving and you're standing still, what are you doing? You are losing. All right. You ever seen one of those, those uh, fail videos online where somebody gets on it, they stand on a treadmill and the treadmill is moving? Or is the treadmill just moving really fast and they just get on it and don't move? What happens? They fall. All right. And you laugh at them. That's what happens to people when you're trying to be the same. You're not trying to get better, but the world is moving. The world is always moving. So anytime you're trying to just stay the same, you are in that moment losing. Point number two. The topic here today is tension relieving versus goal achieving activities. Asking yourself which one you're doing. The people in the top 20%, and I kind of just talked about this already, they're always expanding themselves, looking for ways to improve themselves. They are always learning new ways of doing things, new ways of thinking, and they are constantly adapting to change. This is a key thing. Constantly adapting to change. The things that worked five years ago 
may not work anymore in, in 2020. And the things that are working today may not work anymore in 2025. With five years from now, we might not even have Instagram. We might not even be live streaming anymore. It might be a way for us to do you no know, holograms in your, in your living room and everybody gets an individualized experience. We don't know, but we always have to be looking. What are the new things? What's something new that's happening? What's changing? How are people responding now that they weren't responding before? We always have to make these updates, right? We can't always be doing the same thing. I'll give you an example. One of my my mom's friends, when I was growing up, she had kids that was like the same age as me. So our, we were friends as kids, but my mom was friends with this woman and her husband was a cop and he was about to retire from being a police officer, but he wasn't sure he was going to retire or not. And this woman, her name was Carol. So this woman, I called her Miss Carol. She was older than me. And she said, she told her husband, she said, you need to retire because, and when you go out, and, out in the streets in a gunfight, you still using the revolver. Everybody else is using the automatic. So what are you going to do? You're going to tell everybody to stop shooting while you reload your gun? And she was, she was being, it was a tongue in cheek thing, but it was a really good point that she was making. Like the world has moved forward, honey. You still using the revolver, loading your bullets while everybody else has an automatic. You're going to get killed out there just trying to get in the shootout. So you have not advanced. So it's time for you to either advance or get out the game. He ended up getting out the game. The last time I seen him, he was, you no, know, he had retired from being a cop. The whole point is this. In life, there will be changes. Change is the only constant in life. Everybody understands that. So look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, are you constantly changing the way that life is constantly changing? Because if life is always changing and you're not, as I just said, you're the person standing on a treadmill that's moving. All right. Eventually, you're going to get thrown off the treadmill. You're going to fall on your face and you're going to be on a, on a Snapchat video or I guess it's a TikTok video now. People laughing at you. Make sure you are always adapting to change and change is always happening. So ask yourself, when's the last time I made an adaptation? When's the last time I did something new? When's the last time I examined what I've been doing and asked myself, is this still actually working? How do I know if the things that I've been doing are still working? What am I measuring? What are my performance indicators? How do I know if I'm falling behind or if I'm ahead of the curve or if I'm keeping up with pace? You have to have a way of figuring this out. If you don't have a way of figuring it out, you need to find yourself an accountability partner, hire yourself a coach, get yourself a mentor, go listen to a show, a YouTube video, read a book. Something is going to keep you mentally on point so that you are always checking and making sure you are staying at least up with the times if not ahead of the times. Ideally, you'll be ahead of the times, but at least make sure you are up with the times so that time is not leaving you behind. You don't want to be in 2020 looking like 2010, if you understand what I'm saying. And these are goal achieving activities. Again, let me tell you what they are. Expanding yourself, improving yourself, learning new things, adapting to change. And guess what these things require? They require tension. To expand yourself, if you want to expand your biceps, you got to lift heavy weights. It's going to be hard to lift those weights, but the payoff is your, muscle, your muscles are going to get bigger. If you want to improve yourself, that means you're going to have to be doing something you weren't doing before. That's going to cause tension because you can't do it yet. You don't have the skill to learn new things. That means you're going to tell your brain there's something that I don't know. I need to make space for this, and you might have to get rid of some things that you thought you knew that are no longer true. They might have been true last year. They're not true this year. That means you got to throw them away. Same way we change with the seasons. You can wear a, a big, heavy coat in the winter, but in the summertime, you put the coat in the closet. You don't walk around the summertime with a coat on. Just because you had it on three months ago doesn't mean you have to wear it now. So understand that you must update and change the same way that life is always updating and changes. Again, do not be in 2020 looking like 2010. All right, you'll look like an idiot, but your friends might be too nice to tell you. Point number three, today's topic. Tension relieving versus goal achieving activities. How do you know which one you are doing? Albert Einstein told this story. Now, I didn't know Albert, according to the story that I heard, and somebody told the story about Einstein. I didn't hear Einstein say it. But they said that Einstein, I didn't know he was a teacher. So he was a, a teacher at a school. And he said, Einstein that is, he said he would give the same test to the same class of students two years in a row. So this is at the time when at school you had the same teacher every year. Y'all remember those years when you get the same teacher from year to year? Or maybe, no, I never had that, but whatever. This is what in Einstein's day. Let's just assume that this is true. Two years in a row, he would give the same test to the same kids. Now, somebody asked him when they found out about this, they said, Mr. Einstein, why would you give the same class the same test two years in a row? They already had the test last year. Aren't they just going to know everything that's on the test? You have no idea if you're actually testing their knowledge if you're giving them the same test you gave them before. They know all the answers. Einstein said no. On the contrary, the reason why I give them the same test two years in a row is because this year the answers are different than they were last year. Now I'm pausing so that can sink in with you all. The answers changed from last year to this year. 
And that's why he can give the same test two years in a row. Because the people who are stagnant, what are they going to do? They're going to give the same answers that they gave last year when they got, a, they got a 100 last year. But if they get the same answers this year, they might only get a 50. Or they might, they might get a zero. All the answers might have changed. So understand that just because you're seeing something now that you saw in the past does not necessarily mean, necessarily mean you should respond to it in the same way. It doesn't necessarily mean you bring the same skills that you brought before. Maybe you could do the same thing as before, but maybe not. Maybe things have changed. Maybe the situation isn't the same anymore. Maybe the climate is different. Maybe you have different skills. Maybe the people you're dealing with are, have a different requirement. So understand that life ain't always going to be the exact same way. Just because it looks the same does not mean it is the same. All right, don't mistake the person you're talking to today to be the same as the person you talked to yesterday just because they got on the same sneakers or because yesterday was a female and today is a female. Yesterday was a black guy, today is a black guy. Doesn't mean everything's going to be the same. Times change, people change, situations change, the world is always changing. Ask yourself, are you changing at the same rate? If you are not, you are falling behind even if you don't know it. Okay? If you are not making improvements to yourself continuously, life will leave you behind. And the biggest problem is, if you're making this mistake of not continually improving, is that you will be the last one to find out. You're, one day you're going to wake up and look around and realize, man, everything has passed me by. I did not improve. I did not keep up with the pace of, of the times that are always changing. And now you're realizing at some moment, some light bulb moment, man, everything's passed me by. I don't know what happened. I didn't even see this coming. Of course you did because you weren't constantly thinking about it. You have to have this on your mind, ladies and gentlemen. This has to be a habit, looking at ways to improve, talking to people who are no things that are different from you. They only have to be smarter than you. There's no things that you don't know. People who have different perspectives than you, uh, reading the books, listening to a podcast, subscribing to a YouTube channel, not all of them, some YouTubes, whoever out there has some information that can help you out, whether that's something you buy, something you get for free, a person that you know, you must be doing this. This is your job of self-improvement every day. Everybody understands physical self-improvement because we can see it. All right, if somebody gets in shape, y'all see on, online people do the before and after pictures, right? Any of y'all got a personal trainer, they take the before picture, then you get in shape for six months, they take the after picture and everybody's all excited and telling you how great it is and liking your photos and all that. The, your mind is the exact same thing. The difference with the mental game is that you can't see it. See, I can see if you had a, a stomach you had a beer belly last year, and now you got a six-pack this year. It's clear. I can see that with my eyes. But if you had a, a mental beer belly last year, and now you have a mental six-pack this year, that's going to show in the way that you think. That's going to show in the things that you do. It's going to show in the results that you get in your life. It might not be you no know, Instagram obvious to where you can post it, a picture of yourself, and all of a sudden you, just, you look smarter. It's harder to tell. But this is something that matters. And if your mind is not in the right space, you're not doing things to make yourself better continually, it doesn't matter what your body does. Because when your mind fails, nothing your body can do to fix it. So these are the things that you need to keep in mind when we talk the concept of relieving tension versus achieving goals. They are not always the same thing. Now, with all that being said, I'm going to tell you about this book to my left that I have here in front of me, how you can get this book for free. Then I'm going to recap my points. And if someone has a question, go ahead and post it. I know what I said sounded great. But if you have a question, go ahead and post it. This book right here is called The Mirror of Motivation. The subtitle is The Self-Guide to Self-Discipline. This is the first book of mine that you should read. I've written 27. Where do you start? You start with this. I'm going to make it easy. You get this book free by going to mirrorofmotivation.com. All you do is cover the shipping. The book is already paid for. Now, let me tell you why you want the book. I already told you how to get it. Now, let me tell you why you want it. You want this book because everyone in life has goals. Well, not everyone. Everyone listening to me right now, you have goals. And you understand you can't get something for nothing in life. You got to put some work in to achieve your success or achieve anything. The challenge is you never ask yourself the key question, which is who do I need to be? Yes, I know what I need to do. Yes, I know what I want to have. How many of you know people who work all the time yet don't come close to reaching their goals? How many of you feels like you are working all the time, but you are not making real progress towards your goals? It is not because you're doing something wrong. It's not because you have the wrong strategy. It's not because there's anything wrong with you. It is because you never ask yourself the key question, who do I need to be? This book, The Mirror of Motivation, will help you answer that question. It gives you the framework for you to answer the question. All right? It's not for me to tell you who to be, because how would I know who you need to be? That doesn't even make any sense. That's why the book is called The Mirror of Motivation. I'm going to show you a framework for how you look in the mirror and you tell yourself who you need to be. And then you can repeat that framework over and over and over again because I'm not always going to be around on an Instagram or Facebook Live to give you the answers, but you will always be around to give yourself the answers. That's why this book is called The Mirror 
of motivation. You can get it by going to mirrorofmotivation.com is the link at the bottom here on Facebook and in my pinned comment right here on Instagram. If you do not have this book and you're listening to my voice right now, you are getting sleepy. Right now, you're going to go to mirrormotivation.com, type in your address, and you're going to get this book mailed to you. You are getting sleepy. Mirrormotivation.com. All that being said, let me recap these points. And oh yeah, on the next page, I'm going to show you how you can get this. So after you claim your free copy of this, I'll tell you, I'll make you an offer to get this book called Work On Your Game and another one of my books called The, the Mental Workbook, which will help you implement everything that is laid out in this book right here. So let me recap these points. Tension relieving versus goal achieving. Go ahead and post your question if you have one. Point and Gary Becker, Nobel, Nobel winning prize economist said, the bottom 80% of income earners in America, their income goes up 3% every year, which sounds good, right? Until you realize that inflation goes up 3% every year, which means you're basically staying stagnant. You have to spend just as much as you're making extra because that's the price of life going up. However, the top 20% of income earners, their income increases 11% a year. So every six or seven years, their income is doubling, whereas everybody else is staying stagnant. And this is how the income gap, the wealth gap that people talk about, this is how it gets created. And it's not because some people are lucky. It's not because of privilege. It's not because of anything else. It's because certain people are doing things to relieve tension and take pressure off of their lives, while other people are doing things to create tension in a good way, positive tension, eustress, which is stress that makes you better in order to achieve goals. Point number one, the bottom 80% of people don't read books, they don't take courses, they don't learn new skills, they do not expand themselves because they're always trying to relieve tension. Going, wasting time, watching TV, messing around aimlessly on social media, hanging with people who ain't got nothing going on. Why? Because that relieves tension is easy, it's fun, until it's not. Right? As they say in life, when you're easy on yourself, life is hard on you. When you're hard on yourself, life is easy on you. Point number two, the top 20% of people are always expanding, improving, learning, and adapting to change. This is not easy. I want to be clear. This is not easy, but this is what achieves goals in life. And let me be clear of the distinction of these two. I'm not saying that a person who achieves goals never does things to relieve tension. All right, you can achieve goals and still go on vacation. You can still go to the beach. You can still walk your dog. You can still watch Netflix for an hour or two if you want to. doesn't mean something's wrong with you, but I'm talking about in aggregate where your action's going. Are you looking to relieve tension? Are you looking to achieve goals? Usually you're doing more of one than the other. That's what I'm saying. Point number three, Albert Einstein said he gave the same test two years in a row to the same students. Why? Because the answers changed. The answers last year are not the same as the answers this year. In other words, for all of you to understand, things ain't the same now as they were before. Just because it worked yesterday does not mean it's going to work today. Just because you knew that three years ago does not mean the same thing is true now. Things are always changing. Life is changing. The world is always moving. If you are not moving with it, you are going backwards. All that being said. That'd be, you'll be like the person standing on the treadmill, but the treadmill is moving. And any of you who can imagine that, you can visualize that, you know that's not a good thing. All that said, I'm going to take questions and see if we got any. So shout out to Adam who said your, your high school ball coach is a follower of work on your game. Adam, make sure your high school ball coach has his free copy of the Mirror of Motivation. As a matter of fact, he should get a copy for everybody on the team if he's still coaching. The sports geek, Xavier was good. Mozart Gates, NC is in the house, CR. Darby Gwynn. I'm not sure anybody had a question here. I'm just scrolling through. I don't see any. Who's that? Ago nine a phobia. Appreciate it. Mozart says sleepy Joe. <laughs> well, it's gonna be. It's going to be interesting when we get into those debates. When is that debate? I want to see the presidential debates. Those will be interesting. When those happen, we'll have plenty to talk about here. So, as I said earlier, the votes have been in. People said, half the people said, keep talking about the, the racial stuff, whatever we want to call it. And then the other half of the people said, talk about other things. So, we're going to do both because it's people on both sides who are interested in things. So, we're going to make sure we get a combination of both. But either way, it's always going to come back to the work on your game philosophy, which is all about uh, taking the tools necessary to succeed in sports and how those tools apply to business, sports, and life. Discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative, and how they relate to you getting to where you want to go. And since those are current events that everybody's talking about, everyone will be able to relate. So that's the good thing about talking about the current events is that everybody knows what I'm talking about and you're thinking about it and reading about it anyway, so you might as well discuss it. We don't have to act like it's not happening. Uh, Money May says, how many pairs of work on your game hats do you have? Well, this is a snapback. 
it's a snapback hat. It's not a, a fitted. How many of these do I have? Well, hats don't come in pairs, but I guess you mean how many hats do I have? I probably got about, I don't know. Every once in a while when somebody asks me, do I sell them? I'll sell them individually, but I don't really, I don't really offer merch like that. But if somebody asks me, I'll, I'll tell them. Oh, if anybody wants a hat, it's $50 shipped. That's two to USA. Costs a lot to ship a hat, believe it or not. $50 shipped, that includes shipping. International, I have to check the prices. But how many hats do I have? Uh, I probably got about 20. I'll get some more when I get low. No question today? Oh, thank you. I take that as a compliment. There's no question. Sports Lover says, how, do you, how to release tension or stress? Well, meditation can be a way. I can't really say for you, Sports Lover. You have to try that out and see if it works for you. Tom said, your head is so shiny. That's a fact. Yes, it is. This is I got that, that uh, what do they call it? That restoring balm you put on there after you shave. I shave. That's why. I'm not naturally, if I didn't shave, my I would actually have hair on my head. So I'm not uh, bald by nature. I'm bald by choice. Believe it or not. I started shaving because I got tired of going to the barbershop. That's a true story. So anyway, I'm going to tell you all one more time this book, mirrorofmotivation.com. Mirrorofmotivation.com. The book is paid for. All you do is cover the shipping. You don't have to pay for the book. You just tell us where to ship it. We ship this worldwide. We got airplanes. We got UPS. We got envelopes. We got stamps. We got all that covered. So mirrorofmotivation.com. Somebody said, did I used to have braids? Yes, I did. I had it twice. I had braids in like 2000, 2000, 2001 maybe. Around that time, then I had them. Then I cut them, and then I had them again in like 2005, something like that. Somebody asked, Brandon says, can you speak on the quote, ego is the enemy and how getting complacent and being high on your own horse can ruin gains? Well, I never made that quote, Brandon, so I can't speak on that really. Ego is the enemy is a book. I think Ryan Holiday wrote that book. So he, that's a question for Ryan Holiday. He wrote the book. I never said ego was the enemy, so I can't really explain somebody else's quote. But I will answer the other part of your question, which is how getting complacent and high on your horse can ruin gains. Well, understand that life is, always, life is always moving. So if you have gains, for example, you lift weights and you got big muscles, but then you stop going to the gym, what's going to happen? Your muscles are going to go away. So that's how getting complacent can hurt you. It's the same thing in life if you're smart because you're always learning and getting new information and challenging your brain, but then you stop reading, you stop learning, you stop talking to smart people, what happens? Your brain starts to turn to mush because you're not using it. So they call it atrophy. Anything you don't use, you lose. You use it or lose it. Everybody's heard that before. So that I can answer, but that first part you gotta holler. You gotta holler at Ryan. He wrote that book. Yeah, Brandon said I just meant what your take on it is. Yeah, I don't have a take on it. <laughs> I don't have. If I have one, I give it to you. But I don't have one. I appreciate the question. Somebody said ways to improve short-term memory. There's a guy named what's that guy's name? Jim Quick. Jim Quick. He talks about memory, so you should look him up. There's probably people on YouTube who talk about memory all the time. So look that guy up. All right, everybody. MirrorMotivation.com. When you claim your free copy of this book, on the next page, I'm going to tell you how to get this book and another one as a bundle. That's that. I'm going live every single day. Don't know when. Don't know what time. Just stay tuned. Work on your damn game. We out of here. Dre all day. Have a good weekend.